What's up my worthy designers? Okay, today you guys have been asking what my custom codes are. This is one of my very, very basic ones that I almost put on every single website just because custom fonts seem to up level the website so much all on their own that it's just like a standard I pretty much do now. So this is going to be a simple process once you get the hang of it. The first couple times I did this, it was really clunky and I didn't quite get it. So it's gonna take some practice. Go easy on yourself. It takes a little while to get used to because there's quite a few sections to it. And when I say quite a few sections, I don't mean a, I don't mean in complicated ways, but just paying attention to them. Okay, so we're gonna walk through this process together. So if you need to pause and go along and do this with me, feel free to do that. Okay, so step one, we're gonna make sure we have a custom font. So places that I like to buy my fonts. Now remember, you need to legally have your font license, which means not just the fonts that come on your computer, purchase a license from places like if you have Adobe subscription, creativemarket.com, all those font foundries that you can think of are out there. <laughs> Make sure you have legal fonts. Just putting that out there because we wanna stay legal. Okay, so once you have your fonts, you're gonna to go to your website. This is on Squarespace 7.1. This is the most up-to-date version. If you're using an older version, it might look different than this. Once you log in, you're gonna see this left-hand side. We're gonna to go to pages. This used to be in a different space. So if you're confused by why I'm going here first, it's because Squarespace moved things around. So if you've watched an old tu tutorial and it's in a different place, as of today, which is April 2024, this is where, where it is. It might get moved again, but this is where it is for now. Okay, so under pages, which is nice, they've put all the website page utilities in one spot. So we're in pages. We're going to go down to the very bottom where it says website tools. Custom CSS is the first one, yay! Okay, so this is the area where we're going to paste our custom CSS code. Now, I, I save all of my custom CSS codes into my notes app so that I can easily reference them when I need to get to them. So I open my notes app, it looks like that. And you can see I scroll through and I have all of my um, custom CSS codes, which a lot of them are older too that don't work anymore because that used to be for 7.0. But for the new 7.1, this is what I use. So this custom fonts, we're gonna highlight this entire thing, copy it, and we're gonna paste it into our custom files here. Okay, so the very first piece of information you need to pay attention to is this first paragraph that says font face. So this is where our custom font URL is going to go so it knows where to pull it from. So right in between these parentheses, it says unique URL for your file. Click the file in your custom file folder to get this URL. So we're going to delete this first because wherever your cursor is, that is where your file is going to go. Now, I've already uploaded these, but I'm gonna show you real quick how I do it. I just drag my font over and it uploads it. And you can see I have a few fonts in here. So I'm going to click on Elgoc Light. We're gonna use Elgoc Light today. And notice things already started shifting here. We're gonna make sure I got it right here. We're gonna make sure the HTTPS is the first one and the name of my font is the last one and it should end with like an OTF or TTF depending on which kind of font you have. Now the font family, we're gonna change the name to the name of the font, but you can shorten it if you need to. So if it's like a really long font name, you don't have to copy the font name exactly. I just make it easy for myself and name it something short that I'll remember. So I have Elgoc here, and then we're gonna identify it as which, which fonts we want to, want to assign it to. So like, I wanna assign this to the H1. So if I go to H1, where it says font name, I'm going to type Elgoc. And as you can see, it changed my font to Elgoc. And if I wanna change my heading to, I can go over here to heading two, change the name, 
and it automatically changes my H2 to LGOC as well. So you can do this with your H3s as well. But if you're not going to use it on your H3, I would delete the H3. Delete anything that you're not using. Any of this code that you're not going to use, if you're not going to use it on just the regular font or the quote font, delete all these because it can mess up once you start adding custom codes, it can mess things up. So delete anything you're not using. I will show you one more tip. If you want to also use one of my tips for my other video about how to make high end websites is to use a italicized version as well. So how to use a custom italicized version that you can use in line in the same line as your font. So say I want this your to be like a, a fancy italicized. The, this font doesn't have a fancy italicized. It's just the font that, you know, leans to the right. But if I want like a fancy italicized, I will upload a custom italicized version, which I already did. I've got my italics right here. And what I'll do is I will copy which um, heading that I want the italicized to work to be on. So heading one, we're gonna return two spaces there just to give some space and paste it. We're gonna call this H1 EM. So EM is for emphasis. That is the italicized version of your H1. So we're gonna use the, oh, I didn't put it in here. We're gonna use the next font. So how to put two fonts in here is we're gonna copy this top section. So we're gonna copy, cause we need another font face to identify and paste. So it's not enough that you just uploaded it. You have to assign it to a font face. So again, we're going to delete this right here in between. And look, it's already showing all of my fonts, which is really nice. And I'm gonna click on italics. Okay, if you wanna double check your italics, it's applying it to everything, but we're going to change that in just a sec. We're gonna make sure, yep, the last section says italics. So now we're going to change this to my editor italics. And our font goes back to the way I had it before, but on my H1EM, which is the italicized version, we're gonna name it the exact same font name that I assigned up here, which is editor italics. Okay. Now when we're done, we're gonna hit save. Go over here and then we're gonna hit edit so I can show you the italicized version. Oh, it did italicize this version. Okay, let's unitalicize it so you can see. Okay, so if I wanted this to be italicized, we're gonna hit the italics and it changes to that different font. I would lowercase this so you can see what I mean as a little bit fancier italicized. So it's a little bit fancier Y, a little bit fancier R, just gives a little bit different look with that italicized version. So that's kind of a fancy trick I did with that one high-end website I showed you guys before. Hopefully that makes sense. It does, like I said, it does take some practice doing this. And I'm sure like the first few times you do this, you're gonna be like watching this tutorial over and over again, because it just takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it will start going smoothly. So copy the code below into something that will help you remember where all your custom codes are. Like I said, I keep it in my notes app, but whatever is good for you. And that way you can just copy it and um, paste it. And save this video so that you can reference it because I know a lot of people said they could not find a video that showed them how to do a custom font uh, video. So save this video and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, bye.